Right. Thank you for the invitation. So I'm a neurosurgeon in Paris, so don't be sad about it, but I feel always a bit alone in the robotic audience. Uh, alone because of that, but also because unfortunately I didn't have some patient in my hands and I'm presenting some cataract studies, but next year it will be okay. And so I'm talking about the toe surgery for my uh, field, I mean the skull base. So just a bit of anatomy for you that can be maybe far away. This is a skull base with a sphenoid bone and just inside of it you have this hair cavity that is called the sphenoid sinus. And just at the top of it you have the pituitary fossa uh, which includes the pituitary gland and the tumor I am uh, involved in. Uh, of course this is the work I have performed with Stefan Hans and also Michael. I have no conflict. So as you can imagine, these structures are very deep and in narrow spaces. There are two main techniques that have been described. The first one, microscopy, is now a bit old-fashioned. But uh, you go into the nose under the mucosa thanks to an incision under the lips. For maybe now 20, 30 years, the, the gold standard of this pituitary gland approach is the endoscopy. Transnasal. We have some very nice uh, results with it and a real minimally invasive surgery with great vision, but we can also challenge it uh, and try to make to show some disadvantages, such as sometimes we have to reject and remove some endonasal structures, such as turbinates, septum, etc. You only have a 2D vision. And uh, the ma major pitfall of it is the water tightness problem because when you have a defect into the skull base, you have a CSF leak and the risk of meningitis, etc. So, thanks to this, and <coughs> with my old friendship with Stefanos, we had the idea just to change the axis of the video on the scope. He works for his. Uh, Sorry, uh, far this way, and so why not try to put the endoscope this way, so that we have a, a vision into the cave and maybe endoscope base, and try to improve our techniques because the the, the usual advantages you know with the Da Vinci. So we performed that on cadavers. Uh, this work was made at the Ecole Européenne de Chirurgie, located in Paris with the four arm robots, but uh, usually we can only use three arms in the oral cavity. Uh, we totally perform 10 dissections, and we of course use, as the neural navigation is not so easy for us, uh, a fluoroscope on a sagittal plane. So this is the four sequences, of course the setup, the mucosal dissection with the robot, then the, this, this time uh, drilling, that is that cannot be actually made by the robot totally, and finally the closure. So imagine that normally we take this way, and now we try to make this one. So this is how the, uh, the room is, uh, is set. Uh, on the contrary, to head and neck procedure, the, the, the robot is just behind the patient. You have here the, the radiographic control, two surgeons as usual, and you can see in the picture here the three arms inserted into the mouse cavity after retraction and <coughs> after also a soft palate retraction. So actually we had, this time was quite quite easy, it's just uh, some robotic approach, ten minute, it took 10 minutes, and you have this kind of view into the cable. So this is the soft palate retracted, uh, this is the uh, coane, here the vomea which is uh, joined with the sphenoid here, we we'll have a better view here, with the two wings of the vomea. So just to, for you to understand, this is the uh, area of the section with the robot. And as I just mentioned to you, we have a different axis of view and we have actually a real inferior view of the cell of Jessica. First, we designed this kind of mucosal approach in an inverse U shape. 
but uh, lastly, we, pre we prefer to perform a real U-shape incision because we can, uh, after that, insert the flap into the sinus uh, sinus if you need, and in case of any CSF uh, infection. So, by that time, we have to drill, and we don't have any instrument for that, except one prototype that is maybe hidden hidden in a place in San Francisco, I don't know. So, uh, actually, this time was made by me I'm at the bedside. And actually, with uh, some specific drill, if you put the drill into the label commercial, you can have access to this region, which is quite uh, mysterious for many neurosurgeons, anyway. Um, so this is the key point to enter the sphenoid sinus, just at the uh, joint between the vomer and the sphenoid, just this spot. And this is a very easy, uh, it don't take 30 minutes, the whole procedure takes 30 minutes, but this one is quite quick, and you have this kind of view of the cella tersica that is here, and the corresponding sagittal view with radiography. And so this is a totally inferior view. So just a short movie to show you that it's quite uh, near, actually. You have here that, uh, sorry. Let's move to make it again. So the hard palate, then the soft palate that has been retracted. And here's the hole. You have here the base of tongue, but can be buzzing a bit. The ostopusia, the, the trompe de stache, the uh, nasal cavity are here, and you, the flap is here a bit retracted by coagulation, and this is your final view of the pituitary gland just behind the bone. From then we drill to obtain and to see the dura mater, then we can insert the instrument into this cavity to coagulate the dura and then open it. And of course, on cadavers, we didn't found any adenomas or tumors, so we just removed the normal gland. And the normal gland is this kind of uh, tissue, yellow, yellow tissue uh, color. So we removed it with uh, the robot quite easily, even if we don't have the proper instrument. And at the end of the resection, you can see uh, the pituitary stalk here and the optic chiasma just under. Sorry for that, it's just maybe a picture you don't see usually. And so at the end of that, uh, we talk about closure. It's not so easy to perform suture in this very deep field. But thanks to the flap, we can insert it very close to the pituitary gland. This is this picture. And in case you don't have any CSF liquid, you can just suture it into the cable. First, we had some IDs of free flap, <coughs> but it's not so easy to <coughs> work in progress. So, from this 10 calories study, we have promising uh, results, and despite anatomical variability, we have men, big, women, <coughs> etc. Uh, I think this is the real mini malleable invasive procedure comparing the undone as our one, that can be sometimes a bit uh, tricky with empty nose syndrome, ranitis, etc. And the, the big thing is that we, we really change the axis of work for this tumor. In case of big supracellular adenoma like this one, when you go this way, it's probably not so easy to get here. But if you use a robot going this trajectory, this can be easily seen and maybe easily removed. So, of course, we published it. And we have some great perspectives. The first one, of course, to make some patients. So I think next year we'll have uh, our first uh, clinical study. We also continue to, to, go with, to go with cadavers, just to see the, the exposure limits, for example. Just for fun, we, we go into the brain with it, and the third ventricle. We discover the uh, at, uh, at, uh, sorry, the basal trunk here. All this well just to try to find new application in my specialty. Uh, for example, with Stefanos, we performed a drilling of uh, osteophyte, bony osteophyte of C1, C2 joint. So 
This is possible, but we hope to have a fully robotic procedure. So try to find some bony instrument uh, that can be probably feasible thanks to intuitive collaboration. And we hope we can insert the DAVNC procedure into this uh, little uh, uh, Excel. Uh, just to imagine that the vision would be good. We have a 3D uh, dimension with great manageability of instruments and uh, a very, very low invasiveness. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>